Today we're talking about the Victron DC to DC chargers. So let's take a look at the app and we'll go over some stuff there and some parameters of how we set it up and get you guys rocking and rolling. Okay guys, if you're not familiar with the Victron Connect app, you'll download the app and once you click on it, it will populate this list of devices. So under here, it'll say my devices, everything within range will come up on this menu. So you're gonna wanna select whichever device you're looking to mess with at that specific time. So here we're talking about the Orion Smart 12 volt to 12 volt, 30 amp, isolated DC to DC charger. So we're gonna click on that guy here in the app. So we click here and the next screen that comes up will be the main screen for the Orion Smart DC to DC. Once we're in here, you will see the input voltage side and the output voltage side. So right now, input voltage shows 13.4. That is the starter battery. So your starter battery that is going to the input of the DC to DC. Right now I have it hooked up just so we can get some, some readings on here so you guys can see this will be different. This will say somewhere between 12.6 and 13.0 probably because your lead acid starting battery will be at rest. So this will show somewhere in there. Output voltage will never show up until the DC to DC charger is actually active and will say charging or bulk charging up here where it says off. So currently it says off, which is why you have no output voltage that will populate once the device is turned on. So the next thing we want to do to get this all set up Keep in mind, this is going to be set up for lithium batteries, as that is what it's being used for most on the market today. So that's what we're going to be showing as well. So all of these voltages may be subject to change. They're not all going to be perfect for your specific scenario. But with the Diablo Power Group batteries that we run, these are what's recommended from the factory for us. So that's what I've put in here as an example. So the next thing we're going to do to get this set up, we're going to go up here to the gear. For settings, we're gonna click that. The next screen that pops up will be right here in your settings menu. Function, you can have this set as a power supply or a charger. So it usually comes as this being power supply. You'll click this, it'll open up a drop down menu. You'll select charger if you're using it for a charging function. Um, so then we have battery settings, engine shutdown protection, and input voltage lockout. Engine shutdown detection. This is what's going to be very, very easy to use to cycle on and off for the DC to DC charger. So let's go ahead and click on that one first. So once we're here, your start voltage. Start voltage is the minimum voltage that it can see on the input side, the lead acid starting battery side, that is going to tell this that the alternator is now on and it should engage charging and enable that charging circuit. So start voltage, we usually set this at 14.0 initially just to make sure that that's gonna work good for us. Once you have the vehicle started and you can monitor that voltage coming off your alternator, sometimes it's a hair less, 13.8, 13.9, somewhere in there. So you may need to modify this number based on your actual alternator's output uh, in order to get the right voltage for, for coming on and turning off. So. Start voltage, you're gonna set that as a voltage that's only achievable when the alternator is currently running because the engine has been started and is running. That's what you wanna set that for. Delayed start voltage. Uh, sometimes when you start your car, it takes a minute for the alternator to fully ramp up or for some of the electronics and things like that to drop off from the start sequence. Like a lot of times on diesel trucks, you have glow plugs when you cycle the key and once the key is actually in the start and run position, sometimes the glow plugs on older trucks stay active for 30 seconds to a minute after the truck actually starts. So your voltage will be lower than your normal seeing range. So what, if you normally see 14, 14.2 14 or something like that driving down the highway, chances are when you first started that truck, and the glow plugs and other electronic devices are pulling power, that's gonna cause a voltage drop. And you may not actually get to your achieved voltage for start voltage range until those electronics and those uh, heater circuits and stuff like that turn back off. So delayed start voltage is somewhere close to the start voltage, but maybe a little less. So if those things are running, this will actually still start after a small delay. Uh, 120 seconds, so for the delay start voltage, you can 
change that to a number if you like it more. If you know your truck's glow plugs run for two minutes after the fact, you can set this to three minutes or something like that. And just understand that when you set that delayed start voltage, don't freak out when you start the truck and the voltage is not all the way up to the start voltage yet and your DC to DC charger has not enabled charging. That's totally normal, right? Because we're setting a delay. So keep that in mind. Don't, don't immediately uh, think something's wrong with it. So the next thing we have is shut down voltage. So you can set this as low as you want, but typically you want to set this just underneath the start voltage by maybe half a volt or so. When the voltage, when you turn the car off or turn the truck off, this voltage is going to drop significantly, but it may not actually reach like a lead acid resting charged voltage for several minutes after that. So I have this set just above 13. So when the voltage goes away from the starting circuit because the alternator is no longer putting out power, you're going to see that drop to somewhere 13, 5, and then over time that voltage will decay back down to a resting voltage of about 12.8. So this just ins ensures that it turns off a little bit early so we don't pull any unnecessary juice off that starter battery into your house batteries that you're now charging. Next thing we're going to check is the battery settings themselves. So when you go back to the normal page and you have battery settings. So we'll click on battery settings and that will bring us up to here. And then this is what we're setting our actual charge voltages. So this is the what we want for the battery bank that we're charging, the lithium battery bank. So you're going to need to contact your manufacturer if it came with paperwork or, uh, or some kind of instructions for charging. This is where you're going to want to input your specific data. So we have it at 14.4 and 13.4. Usually float voltage we set around 13.6, um, but we want that a little bit lower now for this just to make sure that every time we start the vehicle, we're not charging all the way up to fully charge if that's not great for lithium batteries. So we have it set just below that for float. And then you can mess around with these times as well if you want a limit on how long it'll charge. If you're going to take a really long road trip and you don't want it charging for an entire 10 hours because you know your batteries will be full after about two or three hours or so of driving, you can set this to that. Um, and then rebulk, offset voltage rebulk, you're going to have bulk charging until it reaches 80%. Um, so you'll be up near the 14 volt range. And then you can set the deviation. So when the battery starts getting drawn back down, if it goes to 0.2 below what you have your bulk voltage set at, it will turn back into bulk charging instead of float charging. So 14.4, it'll come back down until it hits 14.2 or something like that with these settings. You can change that again to whatever you need or whatever is going to work best for you. Once you have all those set up, the next thing to do is to test it. So once you have everything in place, all of your lines run, your fuses are good, everything's ready to roll, you got all your settings input, you're going to go ahead and start the vehicle. Once you start the vehicle, you should see this swap over to bulk charge. So instead of saying off like it did before on the main menu here, when we're in it, it said off. Now when you look at it, with the alternator turning and the engine running and everything's producing, your voltage limits should have increased. Uh, here, I had to doctor these numbers a little bit as I didn't actually have this hooked up to uh, an alternator. I just applied a charging source to simulate this. So these numbers are not going to be what you should see at yours, but it's just for an example. So you should see this jump over from off to bulk charge like we just talked about. And now you should see an output voltage that's actually populated. And this should match very closely to the voltage of the battery bank, plus or minus 0.1 or 0.2 volts here. This might be 0.1 or 0.2 higher because you actually have an active charging source going in. But this voltage should be very indicative of your current lithium battery bank that you're charging through the alternators. <laughs>